live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. When you think of some of the most surprising performances in the history of the playoffs, in terms of a player who did absolutely nothing beforehand and exploded onto the scene in the biggest stage, there are some names that come to mind. In the Super Bowl, you have Seattle Seahawks wide receiver Chris Matthews, who never had a catch in his career, only to have four catches for 109 yards and a touchdown at Super Bowl 49. You have Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Percy Howard, who never had a catch in his career, only to score a 34-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter of Super Bowl X. You have Jacksonville Jaguars running back Corey Grant, who had just 89 receiving yards in his three-year career, and then had 59 in the first half of the 2017 AFC Championship game, only for the Jags to inexplicably stop using him in the second half. But that's another rant for another time. I can go on and on about some of these incredible performances where a player truly came out of nowhere, to the point where not just casual or even diehard fans, but fans of the team in question had no idea who the player was. But in the history of the wildcard round, this has to be the craziest and greatest one of them all. This is Indianapolis Colts fullback Zach Crockett. Now by the time his career ended, Crockett was able to carve out an incredibly successful NFL career, scoring 36 touchdowns and playing for 13 seasons across a few teams. But by the time the 1995 playoffs started, Crockett had a grand total of zero career rushing yards. He was a complete afterthought. And he wound up finishing the game with an unbelievable performance that helped his team win the game, and more than a quarter century later, still lives on in NFL history. And this is the story behind the most surprising performance in the history of the wildcard round. Before I talk about the performance in question, we need some context to understand just who Zach Crockett is, what his role was on the team, and why the Colts were not using him during the season, yet decided to use him in their biggest game of the year. Our story begins in 1994, when a player out of Florida State was beginning to make a name for himself. In 1994, one year after being named national champions for the first time in school history, the Seminoles were looking to repeat. And while they didn't repeat as AP champions, they still had an incredibly successful season, winning the ACC by going undefeated in conference play, winning the Sugar Bowl, finishing fourth in the AP poll with a 10-1-1 record, and being named a national champion by the Dunkel system, although this title is unclaimed by the school. They did this with a strong running game, mainly led by Warwick Dunn, who would eventually become a great NFL player and who finished the 1994 season at Florida State with over 1,000 yards rushing. But as great as Dunn was, finishing second in the conference in rushing yards and first in yards per attempt, he wasn't the man who led Florida State in rushing touchdowns. Rather, the guy that did it was none other than Zach Crockett. While Crockett didn't do a whole lot with Florida State prior to the 1994 season, in 1994, he became a critical part of the offense. He was lethal in short yarded situations, and was a stud at catching screen passes and getting yards after the catch. By the time the 1994 season ended, Crockett had 11 rushing touchdowns, including an incredible game against a nationally ranked Duke team where, in a convincing 59-20 victory, he found the end zone three times. Crockett also famously scored Florida State's first touchdown in the fourth quarter in their 1994 regular season finale against Florida, where the Seminoles trail 31-3 in the fourth quarter, and then, in the famous choke at the Doak, rallied to score the final 28 points of the game. Crockett's incredible knack for finding the end zone by the goal line, with his 11 rushing touchdowns, made him one of the most feared runners in the ACC. He finished second in the conference in this category, only trailing Robert Baldwin of Duke, who had 12. Along with finishing second in the conference in rushing touchdowns, and finishing inside the top 25 across the entire NCAA in this category, he finished second in the ACC in touchdowns from scrimmage, and second in the ACC in total touchdowns. Crockett and his great short yardage ability was an instrumental part of the success of Florida State in 1994, and it's what helped make the Indianapolis Colts spend a third-round pick on him, as in the 1995 NFL Draft, with pick number 79, the Colts chose Crockett. As for how Crockett's rookie season would go, well, let's just say it was a far cry from what he was doing at Florida State. The good news for Crockett was in 1995, he was on a very good Colts team. In 1995, the Colts had the fifth-best defense in the league, and finished with a 9-7 record. Not only was it the first time since 1992 that the Colts finished the year with a winning record, but it was the first time since 1987, and just the second time since the team moved from Baltimore to Indianapolis, that the team made it to the postseason. By no means was it pretty, but after winning four of their final six games, the Colts clinched a spot in the playoffs, meaning that Crockett was on another successful team. The bad news was that, well, Crockett didn't do anything. That season, Crockett touched the ball a grand total of three times. He had one carry for no yards, and two catches for 35 yards. He never found the end zone, 
And what you're watching right now is literally the only footage I could find of Crockett doing anything during his rookie season. This play right here encompasses 33% of his touches for the entire season. Now, it makes sense why Crockett didn't get a whole lot of touches. And that's because they had one of the best running backs in the game in Marshall Falk. He was the team's first round pick in 1994, and in 1995 had over a thousand yards rushing and made it to the Pro Bowl for the second straight year. Still, Crockett finished the regular season with zero rushing yards. He was a complete afterthought when it came to getting the ball. And with that in mind, we head to the playoffs. It's December 31st, 1995, and the Indianapolis Colts are traveling to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego to spend New Year's Eve playing in the wildcard round against the defending AFC champion. Obviously, this is a big game for the Colts because it's the playoffs. But a win here would be monumental in the sense that it would be the first time ever that the Colts would win a playoff game since moving to Indianapolis. I would mark the first time since 1971 that the Colts would win a playoff game. For some perspective on how long ago that was, the last time the Colts won a playoff game at that point, Zach Crockett was not born yet. He was born on December 2nd, 1972, and the Colts' last win was on December 26th, 1971, when they beat the Cleveland Browns in the divisional round. As a side note, to learn more about that 1971 Colts team, click the card in the upper right corner. However, on this day, little did Zach Crockett know that by the game's conclusion, he would become a household name. On the very first play of the game, the Colts got off on the right foot, when Marshall Falk got the handoff from Jim Harbaugh and picked up 16 yards. However, what seemed like a promising start turned into a nightmare, when after the play, Falk went to the bench in pain. As it turned out, on that run, he re-injured his left knee. He was playing with a sprained toe all season, so he wasn't at 100% during 1995, but with that injury, he was still good enough to play. This injury, though, he suffered from loose cartilage, and not only was ruled out for the rest of the game, but for the rest of the postseason. Now the Colts were without their best player. I remember that their second leading rusher, Roosevelt Potts, got injured a few weeks ago during their regular season game against the Chargers, meaning that the Colts were now without their top two runners. For some perspective, after the first play of this wildcard game, they only had one healthy player with over 200 yards rushing in 1995, and that was Jim Harbaugh. This meant that Zach Crockett, despite being buried on the depth chart, and despite having the same number of rushing yards in 1995 as every fan watching the game did, was going to be unexpectedly thrust into the position and was going to need to somehow find a way to carry the Colts to victory. This was the true definition of a trial by fire. But to say that Crockett took advantage of this opportunity would be a massive understatement. On the third drive of the game, he took a handoff for eight yards, finally getting into the positive yardage column. On the fourth drive, he got three straight carries, picking up eight yards, eight yards, and five yards, as he got the Colts into the red zone, where they would eventually score their first points of the game after Harbaugh found Ken Dilger for a two-yard touchdown. And then on the next drive, Crockett did what he did so many times at Florida State, and successfully found the end zone. Although I'm not sure he envisioned scoring from quite this far out, as with less than two minutes to go before the halftime whistle sounded, he took it 33 yards to the house. By halftime, the Colts, who entered this game as 5.5 point underdogs and were without their best player, were surprisingly in front on the AFC champions by a score of 14 to 10, with Zach Crockett playing a huge part as to why Indy's final two legitimate drives of the half ended with a touchdown. And the good news for the Colts? That first half by Crockett was not a fluke. Far from it, in fact. Because as they and the Chargers would soon find out, he was just getting warmed up. Even though the Chargers scored a touchdown in the middle of the third quarter to take a 17-14 lead, the Colts immediately answered, starting their next drive off with an 11-yard run by Crockett, which gave them the momentum to find the end zone on another touchdown pass by Jim Harbaugh. But if you remember this game, you probably remember it for this play right here. Because after the Chargers got a field goal to open up the fourth quarter to make it a 21-20 game, the Colts got it back. And on the very first play of the drive, Harbaugh gave the ball to Crockett. And the rest is history. He took it 66 yards for his second touchdown of the day, as the Colts took a 28-20 lead and would eventually prevail 35-20. Crockett's two touchdowns made the difference, and the 66-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter was the moment that the tide officially turned. It was the biggest play of the game, and helped the Colts win their first playoff game in nearly a quarter century. Just to put into perspective how crazy Crockett's performance was, that 66-yard touchdown run was the longest touchdown run in Colts history in the playoffs. After having no rushing yards all season, he finished this game with 147 rushing yards and two touchdowns. At the time, Crockett was the only player in the history of the NFL playoffs to have at least 147 rushing yards, two touchdowns, and 11 yards per carry in a winning effort. Since then, one other player has done this, when Colin Kaepernick did this in the 2012 divisional round for the San Francisco 49ers against the Green Bay Packers. 
This means that in the over 100 year history of the NFL, Crockett is the only running back to ever put up a stat line this good in a playoff game. And to add to the accolades, Crockett's 147 rushing yards was, at the time, a Colts team playoff record. Since then, Marlon Mack beat the record by one singular yard in the 2018 wildcard against the Houston Texans. This performance by Zach Crockett was iconic and remarkable. And after the game, everyone had one question. Just where the heck did this come from? Crockett said that he never saw the performance coming, saying that the performance shocked him just as much as it shocked everyone else. However, when he got his opportunity, he said that he felt that he had to make the most of it. As Crockett said, some people think that a big guy can't run. I had to prove him wrong. And I think it's safe to say that after this performance, he proved a ton of people wrong. Whereas nobody knew who Zach Crockett was beforehand outside of diehard Colts fans and Florida State fans, by the time the ball was dropping to conclude the calendar year of 1995, Zach Crockett was the most popular name in the country. And as it turned out, this would be the surprising start of a very successful career in the NFL. The bad news for Crockett was that at least when it came to the Colts, he was unable to replicate that success. For a very long time, he was looking like a one-game wonder who would do next to nothing in the NFL. He had just 12 rushing yards the following week against the Kansas City Chiefs in the divisional round, and just two rushing yards in the AFC Championship against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Crockett didn't score a single rushing touchdown with the Colts in 1996, and found the end zone just once in 1997 before being released near the start of the 1998 season. After 1998 ended, Crockett had scored just one regular season rushing touchdown in his career, and looked like he would be out of the league. But the good news is that when he was picked up by the Oakland Raiders in 1999, he completely turned his career around, and became known as a very solid fullback. Crockett wound up playing eight seasons with the Raiders, even helping the team make it to Super Bowl 37 during the 2002 season. And in those eight seasons, he scored 35 touchdowns, including a career-high eight touchdowns during the AFC Championship season in 2002. Anytime you're a running back or a fullback and can play in the NFL for 13 seasons, going from 1995 to 2007, that's a heck of a career. If you want a music comparison, the career of Zach Crockett is a lot like the career of Randy Newman. He had a hit completely out of nowhere that absolutely no one saw coming, then did nothing for a long period of time to the point where everyone thought he would be a one-hit wonder, and then carved out an extremely successful career years later when everyone thought he was done. Still, it's absolutely crazy how Zach Crockett, of all people, had this incredible wildcard performance. The man had zero rushing yards in his career. The man had touched the ball three times all season. The man was completely buried on the depth chart and was a complete afterthought. And not only does he come in and help his team win their first playoff game in a quarter century, but he does so by setting a franchise rushing record and by putting up, statistically speaking, one of the greatest stat lines by a running back in playoff history. When you consider those incredible circumstances, it's very easy to see why many people consider Zach Crockett's remarkable performance in this game to be the most surprising performance in the history of the wildcard round. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed out to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.